The journey of the Indian space program began here, in the sleepy, palm-fringed village of Tumba in the outskirts of Thiruvananthapuram in Kerala. The Church of Mary Magdalene caught the interest of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the father of India's space program. It was located on the Earth's magnetic equator, an imaginary line where the equatorial electrojet exists. This motivated Sarabhai to embark on a space mission. Soon, the church was converted into a space center. The country's first sounding rocket was launched from this location. It speaks volumes of the sheer determination of all those scientists who were involved in the launch, including Dr. Sarabhai, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, and Homi J. Bhaba, father of India's nuclear program. They had limited resources, but they had a dream, and they dreamed big. In the early 1960s, the Soviet Union inaugurated the Space Age with its launch of Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite, on October 4, 1957. Space was now being seen as humanity's future. India too decided to enter the space race. Sarabhai decided to write a letter to then Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru to start a space program. The Indian National Space Committee for Space Research, INCOSPAR, was established in 1962. But India's first rocket launch did not gain the global media attention it deserved due to the assassination of then US President John F. Kennedy, which happened the following day. Six years later, on India's 22nd Independence Day, the Indian Space Research Organization was formed out of Inkuspar. The Tumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station was renamed in honor of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. Today, the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center is the lead center of ISRO, responsible for the design and development of launch vehicle technology. But one of the most defining images from the past is this one. The year was 1981. ISRO wanted to launch an experimental communication satellite named Ariane Passenger Payload Experiment, or simply Apple. But the satellite antenna had to be tested under a thermal blanket. Setting up an Apple Mission Control Center at Sri Harikota was a challenge, as ISRO lacked the facilities. Apple was then put on a bullock cart to provide a non-magnetic atmosphere and test the antennas in a field. It was successfully launched in June that year. These words touched the heart of every Indian. In 1984, a former Indian Air Force test pilot, Wing Commander Rakesh Sharma, became the first Indian citizen to go into space. He spent seven days and 21 hours in space as part of a joint program by ISRO and the Soviet Intercosmos Space Program. Here's some interesting trivia. While in space, Sharma practiced the revolutionary zero-gravity yoga, which was later appreciated by the Russian space agency Roscosmos. To this day, Sharma remains the only Indian citizen to have gone into space, although three Indian-origin women have flown into space for different missions. Liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with a multitude of national and international space research experiments. Houston now Born in Karnal in the northern Indian state of Haryana, Kalpana Chawla was the first woman of Indian origin to go to space. She first flew on space station Columbia in 1997 as a mission specialist. It's a very special feeling uh, and really up here the night sky and the stars are amazing. Unfortunately, her second flight on STS-107 in 2003 was her final journey. Chawla was one of the seven crew members who died when the spacecraft disintegrated during its re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. A household name in India, she was posthumously awarded the Congressional Space Medal of Honor in the United States. 
So now again, we're on the right-hand side, all the way on the right of the International Space Station. This is Columbus. Sunita Williams became the second American astronaut of Indian origin to go into space. A United States Navy officer, at one point, she held the record for most spacewalks by a woman. In July 2021, aeronautical engineer Shirisha Bandla became the third Indian origin woman to fly into space. She joined British billionaire Richard Branson on Virgin Galactic's first fully crewed suborbital test flight in September.